the Asabari. The Asabari were the main cavalry unit utilized by the Achaemenid Empire. As with all Iranian empires, the Achaemenids or Persians were famed for their cavalry, which was well suited for the vast open plains of the east. The Asabari were, for their time, the pinnacle of eastern cavalry, combining many elements of successful horse units that came before them. As with most cavalry units of the time, the Asabari were recruited from the rich landowners of the Persian Empire. The reason for this was that a horse is simply an expensive investment, and as such the owners of these horses had to be able to pay for their upkeep. This made the Asabari something of an elite unit, as it was only recruited from the richer elites due to the need for well-bred and well-trained horses, and also riders to fill the roles. Indeed, the standards for horses that could be accepted into the unit were so high that only the best animals could serve in the unit, further exemplifying just how rich you had to be to serve as an Asabari, as the high quality horse again means more money being spent on purchasing and feeding the said horse. Perhaps because of greater financial flexibility, the Asabari were better equipped than those serving in the units such as the Sparabara or Takabara. However, the need for speed and mobility was still paramount. As a result, the Asabari wore a similar padded vest to the Sparabara, which provided a surprisingly large amount of protection for the wearer. This had several benefits over heavy armour. For one, it allowed the Asabari to be even more mobile than their foes, as they were not weighed down by heavy armour. Another benefit was that if the armour was slashed or broken in combat, the wearer could easily patch up the holes, while someone wearing an expensive heavy breastplate would have to go back to the armoury and have a smith repair it. The Asabari also had the benefit of having funds to purchase even more armour. This was usually in the form of a helmet. The helmet used by the Asabari was usually a bronze cone-shaped helmet, similar to the helmet used by the former Assyrian Empire. This gave the wearer even better protection from stray arrows and javelins, as well as protecting the Asabari whenever they entered close quarters combat. Talking of which, when in combat the Asabari served several roles. One of the primary roles the Asabari fulfilled was that of skirmisher cavalry, as they were armed with various forms of light javelin. The light armour meant that when threatened by heavy cavalry or counter charge, they could easily retreat behind friendly lines, resupply on javelins and return to the fray to menace the enemy once again. When the enemy was suitably softened up, the Asabari would abandon this role as skirmisher cavalry and charge headfirst into their weakened foes, often wielding short spears or axes. As a result, their role as both skirmishers and offensive cavalry made them a highly versatile and effective force on the battlefield. When not in combat, the Asabari were still a key component in the Achaemenid armies. More often than not, smaller divisions of Asabari would be sent out on scouting missions. These scouting missions would be anything from counting the size of an enemy force or simply mapping out the terrain that was ahead of them. As they were horse riders, this made them perfectly suited to such a role, as they could easily travel more ground faster than on foot, and also run away if they were spotted by the enemy. Throughout their long existence, the Asabari were subjugated to various reforms, each time making them more suitable for longer melee engagements. As a result, they began to fill the heavy cavalry role as opposed to their previously lightly armed skirmisher cavalry occupation. These reforms reached their climax with the reign of Cyrus the Younger, who reformed the unit to resemble the cavalry units used by the Persians' longtime foes, the Greeks. The Asabari were so effective in combat that following the Macedonian conquest of the Achaemenid Empire, many were enrolled into the Macedonian army as replacements for the losses sustained in previous battles. These men served their new king, Alexander the Great, ferociously well, allowing the Macedonians to penetrate deep into modern-day Pakistan, something that the European Macedonian divisions were hesitant to do. Indeed, the shame of having been outshone in bravery by those who had once been their foes motivated the Macedonian forces on multiple occasions to keep going deeper and deeper into unknown territory, until eventually rumours of what lay ahead of them even swayed the Asabari to join with their Macedonian comrades in convincing their king to turn back for home. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.